Welcome to Tiki Central Canada. Ever wonder what's in that cool, refreshing drink that you just have to have on that hot summer's day? Mmm, me too. Picture a man going on a journey beyond sight and sound. He has left society. He has entered Tiki Central with palm trees, beach sand, blue skies, and God, get me a drink now. Here are your hosts, Craig, Cam, and Paula, and their wacky views in drinks, life, and maybe information. Hey folks, and hey, how we doing? It's Tiki Central Canada, and I'm Craig, your bartender, mixologist, and information for the hour. Also, too, we've got, hey, we've got both co-hosts today. Cam is here. Hi, Cam. How are we doing? Hey. <laughs> That's all I get out of him today? Yeah. Hey. How are you? If he would stay this quiet, the Wait, rest of it would be great. How many drinks has he had? I want to know. <laughs> it's like, jeez. I am up to my gills. <laughs> He's floating. Uh, Paula, and how are we doing? Hi. Hi. How are we? Yeah. I'm She's good. got a jacket on. <laughs> it's not that cold I down here. I forgot to take it off. <laughs> it's like, jeez. Yeah. I know it's not Brazil, but it's, it is, a you know. <laughs> Brazil. Da, 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 da. Wow. And let's sing along with Cam here. Uh, there we go. <laughs> On that note. Hi. Hi. Yes, it's me, the Brazilian co-host. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Hola. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yes, today, actually, we were doing a show on Thanksgiving. And, uh, of course, you know, because down in the States, it's Thanksgiving in November. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, we skipped it by, and for us, it's October for us. Yes, yeah. I, I skipped it by mistake. I yeah, wasn't You weren't even here. in the country for no. Christ's sakes for, during Thanksgiving. You were out of the country. Yeah, mm. we, were, we were finishing our honeymoon. We did a very yeah. fine rum tasting during Thanksgiving, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we all gave thanks to that. Yes, it was very good. Oh. Thank God to the bottle. Barf to you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you actually had Thanksgiving with Cam in your house? No. Oh Lord, no, no, no. no. <laughs> he would eat all the turkey. What are you talking about? No way. No, I spent I spent the weekend um, uh, slowly. Pickle- I really don't care. Let's carry on. Oh, ouch! ouch. ouch. <laughs> then why do you ask? <laughs> Sorry, I asked him if you were uh, here. You weren't here. I don't care. Then uh, where you were? No, that's fair. <laughs> okay, Aww, fine. Where were you? Nobody cow. really cares. No, it's okay. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Did you have a good Thanksgiving? <laughs> well, since you asked. Um, I actually didn't do anything, uh, okay. but it was a good time. I, sure. I, I enjoyed my quiet time. There we go. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's oh, good. Yeah. That's good. Okay, I'm in a bottle of wine. There yeah. we go. Bottle oh. of wine. Bottle of gin. <laughs> bottle? Bottles. Keg. There we go. Bottles of gin. Yeah. Okay. So uh, speaking of gin, what are we uh, talking about today? Yeah, what's the booze? So today we're going to be talking about the missionary's downfall. That's the cocktail we're talking about today. Dun, downfall dun, dun, dun. of a Iesu Domine Dona Ay, qué susto. Oh Don't do God, that. You scared the me. Out. <laughs> okay, so missionary, missionary is like a down. priest, right? Yeah, yeah. So why is the, the priest... He's having a downfall. He's drunk. <laughs> He's a drunken idiot. So that's how you make a priest drunk? Yes. <laughs> With this booze? <laughs> this booze, yeah. No, no. No, what it is is that... It feels like the beginning of a joke. Yeah. <laughs> so the missionary <laughs> walked into the bar. And I'm how at... do you make a priest drunk? Ooh. Fun times. <laughs> so missionaries downfall, you say? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, the reason why I picked this one is because it's a classic tiki cocktail actually made by Don the uh, Beachcomber, one of the original creators of tiki. Name. I've heard yep. that name too. And uh, also, it's too, not the Beach Bombardi. Not the Beach Bombardi guy. Okay. No, no. And also, too, because it's Thanksgiving, a lot of missionary places obviously are doing things to give back to the community, like right? clothes and food and things like that. Right? We're we're trying to help out uh, other people, right? Which we should do more often. Not exactly. just on Thanksgiving. Exactly. I don't know why it's always Absolutely. so focused on Thanksgiving Absolutely. and Christmas. You know, you're exactly right on that one. My sure. mom would make me every single year. I had to clean out my closets and everything, toys, everything. I had to donate mm. half of it. She would say, if you want anything new, you, you have to clean out your stuff. the old mm-hmm. to make well, room good, for the new. That's a good suggestion. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And every year, and this time of year, we would go and donate stuff prior to Christmas right? so right. that other kids could have gifts. But here you guys don't have that many poor people, right? Like, who do you donate it to? Yeah, Salvation no, Army. Salvation Army. Lots of donations. Yeah, Salvation yeah. Army. So we got Don the Beachcomber. Yes, and we've got uh, the Missionary's Downfall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so what it is is actually his original Don the Beachcomber cocktail from the 1940s. So when he first started his uh, tiki bar, this is one of the first drinks he actually had. 
And actually, what it was is that from all these travels that Don and Beachcomber did, he was kind of fascinated with Cuba when he was in there, and they were making the daiquiri. And so he noticed that, uh, if, you, if you notice, actually, one thing when we talked about in the past is that some drinks, like example, like the simple ones, like the daiquiri, which is just sugar, lime juice, and rum, through time will actually evolve into something different. Sure, yeah. Like, and they tend to get more elaborate more and a elaborate, little, like, more layers. schmancy. Okay. Right. And so uh, we see that actually with Don the Beachcomber doing the same thing and also Smuggler's Cove. So Smuggler's Cove is a place we've talked about in the past. Me and mm-hmm. Cam have. I don't mm-hmm. remember. Have yes. we? Yes. If you've been listening to the episode, you would know. I listened, uh, but I don't your remember. Name Cam. <laughs> Cam, 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 Cam. So anyway, <laughs> that's a me. That's a me. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and so, anyways, uh, what is the Smuggler's Cove? Is a place down in California. It's a bar, a tiki bar. And what it was is that he eventually wrote a book, and now it's like a kind of the tiki bible for bartenders. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. And so, one of the things you also notice in this drink, though, when we go through the recipes, just like every other tiki drink we talked about in the past is that there's layers. So you're going to taste the mint. You're going to taste some honey. You're going to taste some peach. You're going to taste some pineapple. Mm. Little hints of these little different ingredients all combined together to make one tiki drink. I probably did it wrong then because I just remember tasting mint. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It was very pronounced on the mint. um, Yes. But I can understand where particularly the honey uh, came in. Yeah. uh, yeah. Because it had like this... Thickness. Yeah, exactly. Like a viscosity to it yes. that mm-hmm. that um, you don't get without something like that. I got a very, little mustache. Yeah, we you like did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. yeah. You like the froth. No, it was good. I, yeah, had, a, good. I had a froth mustache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, that commercial back in the 90s, Got Milk? Absolutely. And they had all the yes. famous yeah, people yeah, yeah. with the milk mustache. That's right. That was me today with yeah, this drink. Yeah, we just like got booze. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. booze. Got mint. <laughs> Sure, got yeah. extra mint here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. It's, it's, it wasn't, I didn't even do my face. Oh, no, no pucker face no for this pucker one. No pucker face. It so wasn't too boozy. No yeah. pucker face for this yeah. one. No, like, like uh, for, for me anyway, I, I really didn't taste any distinct either flavor or odor of alcohol. I didn't either. It was very, very, like, it, it was quite tasty. It's a mild and, drink. And, yeah, and definitely mint forward. Mm-hmm. Um uh, and very thick. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, if if I didn't know better, I wouldn't have known that I was drinking an alcoholic beverage. Exactly. Me yeah. neither. Yeah. 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 But keep in mind, folks, we're going to talk about two recipes. We only have the first one. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's, That's important yeah. to say. Yeah. Now, one of the things also that you want to point out, and you just talked about, is that we didn't taste the rum. And the reason why is because just like a daiquiri, we used white rum. So remember when we did our rum tasting test? Mm-hmm. The white rum is used for Only cocktails. Only vaguely. <laughs> it's very yeah. amongst the ten yeah, rums we tried. It's a bit of a. It's, it's a bit yeah, of but a I, I heard the episode. Smurred mess. And yeah. you guys mentioned that there's not too much of a taste. It's more like a almost a vodka. The white rum the is white. used. Yeah. It's it basically used just to add alcohol to yeah. a drink, and it doesn't take it away from any of the other elements that are in the drink. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And that's what we did in this one. You said like we don't taste any booze. You just mm-hmm. taste all the other elements, right? So, so what is like what specifically was in the drink that we had earlier tonight? All right, so I'm going to give you guys two recipes today. So we're going to do Don the Beachcomber. Which one did you make? Uh, the Don the Beachcomber one I made. This okay. one in blue. Yep. Okay. And the Smuggler's Cove is the other one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the Don the Beachcomber one. Let's go through that one. And what you do is this recipe we make two glasses, like me and Cam made. So we made one batch, but it actually makes you two glasses, two mm-hmm. servings. So we're going to do one ounce of light rum. So that could be Bacardi rum. Um, or if you're listening to a rum tasting uh, episode that me and Cam did, Plantation mm. Rum, really good rum. And actually, that's the rum I used in this one. Cool. Yes. Uh, so you do also a half ounce of peach liqueur. Now, I do want to emphasize that's not peach snaps, peach liqueur. If you okay, can't find God. peach liqueur, then you can use apricot, which I used, okay. apricot liqueur. So I've had you some... couldn't find the peach liqueur? I'd, no, every yeah. word is peach snaps, peach snaps, peach I've snaps. I've had some bad experiences with peach snaps. That's why I didn't make it peach snaps. Thanks, I don't buddy. know what peach snap know. is. I don't really either, but it's just like peach flavored alcohol, but it's very artificial flavored. And yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, the apricot brand she is pretty good to yeah. add for that. Uh, half ounce of lime juice, a half, uh, one ounce of honey syrup. And so that's honey and water, just like a simple syrup of honey instead of sugar. I see. Okay. I was, yeah. was going to ask about that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, two ounces of diced p- uh, pineapple. And, uh, and when you say diced, is it super little diced? No, I actually, I just put in big, huge chunks. Because you're going to put this into a blender eventually, so it's a good question. So uh, you don't have to make them really, really small, because you're putting it into a blender anyway. Okay. Right, so you can make it... You, oh, know, I you put it in the blender upstairs? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I never heard the blender yeah, neither did I. happening. That's how good I am. That's why I was like, how did he put these little pieces? Like, yeah. was he chopping yeah. minuscule pieces? I was sitting like, so, you know, so I was. Ginzo. Ginzo knife. Yeah. Two ounces of tightly packed mint leaves. So I put about, I think, 10 to 12 mint leaves in there. Wow. Uh, six ounce of crushed ice. And so I did use my ice bag that I got for Christmas. I mm-hmm. can use that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what it means by crushed ice is what you could do is you could take uh, some ice cubes into like a towel, um, uh, dish towel, or even if you have an ice bag, and just bang it with a mallet. Or you can use the function in your fridge that says or crushed ice. Or crushed ice. There, for there's all always you that. Technomology <laughs> for all you rich folks out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is that for rich folks? <laughs> it's almost in every fridge nowadays. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, you just like like get some ice, wrap it in a towel, and then beat it like somebody owes you money. That's what I did in Brazil. We, but we would get the whole bag of ice and uh, just throw it on the oh, floor. Oh, and, and, and just throw the whole bag yeah, down the stairs. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I still no, do no, that. I still do that. The only problem with that is, is that sometimes like the sharp bits break through the bag. What is that? Uh, what's that movie there where she's the ice picking? Like, you know, she's uh, basic instinct. There you go. Cool. Oh my lord! Right there, right there. Sharon Stone at her peak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was one gorgeous lady at that age, eh? With oh, a this gila. Yeah. She was so pretty. So, okay, I've got a so question, it, though, yes. because, like, and I mean, I think I think maybe having tasted it, like, I've got the answer, but it's a very mint-forward drink. Yeah. Well, yeah. you also got to get a little bit of the honey in there and the, the pineapple and the apricot. So it will, you, you, I don't know if you taste it, but there's, there's kind of layers in there, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not just the mint. And mm-hmm. the mint's not over, like, because people go, oh, mint. No, but and it's not overpowering. It's no. really smooth. Really subtle. But it's the first really thing subtle. that you feel, for sure. Without question. Yeah, yeah for sure. And then, um, yeah, you got to garnish that with a mint sprig. So what you can mm-hmm. do is you Beautiful all... garnishing, by the way. Absolutely. It yeah. looked beautiful. It looked, it looked like a showpiece drink. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll have a picture for it for sure, yes. Yeah. So you do is you can take all the ingredients, you can put it in the blender, and you'll blend that for high speed for, what, 20 seconds, and then you can pour unstrained into a chilled coupe glass. I didn't chill your glass, Cam. I'm sorry. That's okay. You're forgiven. It's fine. It was so pretty. What, what, what they don't know there is that usually when we do these tastings of these drinks- We don't put the garnish on. We never have garnish. Mm. Usually Craig makes it so that we know we the taste it. and, you know- so today it was an actual treat that we got to see it. The garnish. The actual way that it's supposed to be. So it's decorated and super pretty and fancy in the right glass, actually. The right glass, yes. Mm-hmm. Usually we don't have that either. It just comes in whatever Plastic he finds container. to serve. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. So I got a it, pot it was over here a, in the corner. Here we go. A yeah. pretty treat today. Yeah. Here you go. So what's the distinction between um, uh, the uh, Dawn the recipe. Beachcomber. Yeah, Don the Beachcomber v Smuggler's Cove recipe. Yes. So, we could also do the Smuggler's Cove. And the name, what it is, is that they changed it enough that they didn't want to um, call it the same name. Same name. So, the, and, and this is the second version of the drink. Yes, exactly. Okay. Missionary's Downfall. But like, what it is, because they changed it enough, they actually wanted to change the name. So, it's actually called Aku Aku. So, what does that mean exactly? Where's Mark when you need him? <laughs> Damn it, you asked me that. And I did forget what that I, I actually took the spiritual... effort to look it up. And yeah, it means spiritual guide. There we go. Spiritual guide. Which is pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Buck of knowledge over there. I, I can't swear. believe you remembered that. I, I did wrote it not down. remember. Oh, you wrote oh. it down. You cheated. You, <laughs> you see, that's why I needed the pen. So he's going to guide me to the bar? It's from the Easter oh, Island? Easter Island, yeah. Easter Island. Cool. Yeah. No, it's amazing. I guess they didn't I have did access to magic mushrooms. And look, I didn't even write it down. <laughs> oh. All from memory. Jeepers, creepers. Huh. She's a ringer. Ouch. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Akua may also refer to Akulavik, a remote northern village of 600 people in Nunavik, Quebec, Canada. <laughs> okay, it's definitely not that. <laughs> it's like it's like, it's like the opposite of tropical. Yeah, it's right. Uh, it's frozen wasteland. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so a coo a coo is what you scream just before the polar bear bites you. <laughs> I would love to see a polar bear live, like face to face. Go to James Bay. I want to see them live so bad. Gonna you're go gonna home. you're gonna be one of these. You're one of these people who's gonna. Oh, you're so good. Ah! <laughs> took my arm no. off. Uh, no, actually, I fear for the bear. All so, right, so the Smuggler's Cove recipe. So let's go through that. So you're going to do five one-inch square chunky fresh pineapple. Chunks of? Chunks of pineapple, yes. <laughs> it doesn't say chunks of. It says chunks fresh pineapple. 
Yeah, yes. but you said chunky. Oh, just said chunky? <laughs> chunky. Like, it's like a big fat pineapple. Hey, Tommy's guys. a little chunky there. Yeah. Five one inch square chunky fresh pineapple. Chunky. Well, it's right beside the soupy there. Chunks, you go. Uh, <laughs> chunk of soup. Uh, so I, I eight men live. Uh, <laughs> eight. Abadee, abadee, abadee. <laughs> That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Yep. Um, eight mint leaves. <laughs> Okay, that's very specific. <laughs> Paul is dying over there. Yeah. Um, eight mint leaves, uh, one ounce of fresh lime juice, <laughs> half an ounce of Demerara syrup. So we talked about that before. It's more like a brown sugar kind of syrup instead of just regular white yes. syrup. Syrup. Mm. A uh, half ounce of peach liqueur. So again, that's not peach snaps. Okay. Yeah. You can use a, um, apricot brandy if you want to. That's what we did. Mm. And then one and a half ounces of blended light aged rum. Hmm. So it doesn't have to be from Puerto Rico. It doesn't have to be from Cuba. You can use right. whatever you like to use. Wait, nice you mix. have to blend or it Or you first? have on hand. No, no, no. It's rum that's been blended, so it's multiple. Uh, yeah. As Cam noticed from the rum tasting cause. I there, did, yes, too. I exactly. heard it. I heard it that, mm. that they blend a bunch of times. That's yeah. right. Mm. Okay, so to make the drink. <laughs> Powerful, <laughs> hey? Uh, so what you can do is you can take your uh, mixing tin, and you can put your pineapple ch- chunks in there, and then you're going to muddle that. Now, we've talked about that before, taking the right. little miniature baseball bat and kind of pushing down and twisting. Right. I want to emphasize push and twist. Okay. So you're not going to beat it like Michael Jackson. You. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a good I one. It's radio. They can't say <laughs> hello. Yeah. Um, I still can keep that joke in there. Yeah, no, like no, so, so you're essentially grinding it, breaking up the fibers you're and not, stuff, yeah, but not like pulverizing. Pulverizing it. Because as soon as you okay. pulverize mint, it actually gets very sour. Oh, really? Yeah, it gets very tart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I Why? mean, it's a bit like that self defense uh, technique they, they told young women in my high school. What, that was a long time ago. Huh? Grab, grab, twist, pull. <laughs> And he'll drop to the ground. Yeah, I don't know. You <laughs> if you do it right, he should. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, yes, yeah, so what you can do is you can add the remaining ingredients and 12 ounces of crushed ice. You're going to flash blend that <laughs> for 10 seconds. And then you're going to double strain that into a chilled coupe glass and then float the large mint leaf on top. So, so the difference on this one compared to the last one is that mm. we're actually double straining it. So we don't have ice particles in there and pieces of mint. Fewer yeah. lumps. Hmm. So the d- difference, basically, is this one will be strained. Yes, it'll be strained. It'll be double strained. So let's explain double strain. So you, normally when you see a uh, bartender making a drink in a shaker and eventually he pours it into a glass, he's using, he's using a hawthorn strainer at the end of the shaker to strain whatever, like ice or whatever's in there he doesn't want. Double strain means that you're using like the, that plus the little tea strainer we've seen, you know, we could see people using for like tea and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what it is is that whatever the first one misses, like can't catch, the second one catches and all you're getting is just pure mm-hmm. liquid. That's all you're getting. So, so this wouldn't be as frothy. It's, as, a, it's a huge difference then. Yeah, this won't be as frothy as the first one. Hmm. You see, in all this time, I thought double straining was just like when you try to fart once and it doesn't quite come out and then you try again and it comes out. <laughs> Sometimes it comes up with poo, so careful. Oh. Yeah. When yeah, you we, try too hard. We call that a shart. <laughs> oh, God. The show's going in the toilet. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, hey, easy there, Craig. Enough with the puns. Oh, jeez. Et cetera, et cetera. So now, now I'm, I'm wishing that you, and obviously I'm saying that extremely selfishly because I know it's a lot of trouble to make the two different types of drinks. Yes. These seem a bit more troublesome than than, than the, the first one. Blue Hawaiian, the Blue Hawaiian, for example. Yeah, what are you drinking? I'm, I'm obviously drinking Blue Hawaiian because now every time I come no, here... No, you're not. What's the that? Oh, yeah, it's not. It's Apollo's Wish. So I do actually have for you, by the way, I've got a gift. Because usually I get the gifts on the show. So actually, I got a gift for Paula this time. Oh my God! So she told me me. when she was on her trip, and she tried to get the 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 guy to make the recipe, and he's like, "I don't have the blue carousel." So then we make we made Paula's wish instead, and (laughs) sorry. Cam's trying to take it away from your spotlight. I know. Oh, my God. So I'm just stupid. Paula, Paula, Paula. Oh, so please. Anyway, so anyway, so I, you told me that when you came back, you tried to recreate it a thousand times at home, and yeah. it didn't come up correctly. So I got you a bottle of cream of coconut from the coffee shop. Yes. So now you can take that home and make all the Paula wishes you want. Okay, so guys, just so you know, and you too, just so you know, Cam, hmm. Hmm. it does not, like, I, I tried doing the Blue Hawaiian from the recipe that we, we passed on the website. Oh, you, yeah, this is something you want to tell the listeners, right? I do want to tell the listener because I think it's important. Okay. I tried making it at home, yes. right, from what I heard here at the podcast. And I tried it here so I know the real taste that it should taste like. And I went home. I bought the ingredients 
and I tried it, and it Didn't tasted work. like crap. Yeah, it was awful. Mm. It it was a a shart. That that's how bad it was. Yeesh. So, <laughs> oh boy, it worst. was bad. And and I was like, but I bought the cream of coconut from the supermarket, right? The, Correct. It's coconut. It's white. It's right. a paste it's like, it's type yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It does not work the same. So what Craig mm. uses, and I'll ask him to post a picture online, mm. because it's very different than actual. And I tried with coconut milk too, because I was like, maybe, you know, oh, okay. try coconut yeah. milk. you know, yeah, it's yeah. something different yeah. that he's yeah. buying. Yeah. And I and I tried one from Brazil that's more sweetened too. Really? Yes. And it, it still it didn't work. Still was crappy. And then I. I tried to change, and then I bought the exact same pineapple juice that he uses because I was like, I, what's wrong? Like, it can't be I this can't wrong. I can't do it. I mm-hmm. can't bartend. It's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I discovered that it's actually the cream of coconut because it's he doesn't use one from the can that is white in anything. It's no, no, transparent. right. It's not from the grocery store. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it is sweetened already. It's That's like a syrup, why. right? Yeah. yeah it's a, it's right. like a simple syrup. It's like a simple syrup with coconut. Okay. But with coconut. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it tastes nice and and refreshing refreshing because when you try it with the the coconut cream from the supermarket it becomes a shit show it's not as good yeah yeah Uh, yeah. no i can imagine that like it lacks that that like sugary yes it doesn't it doesn't have the the sweetness so it's just like bland and and you're like so yeah so like i've mentioned before in the past and we will actually put a picture on there that when you're buying the cream of coconut you go to a specialty coffee shop so a place that sells like almond syrup or orge uh, lavender, things like that, and you'll find in there there'll be a cream of coconut. Now, the one I've got is less sugar. Like I've, I've gone through a couple of different tr- different ones that they actually have there, and this is the best one. Actually, I'll take a picture of it and put it on the site. It's for you fantastic. Guys. Yeah, it's and I didn't so know. Sugary. Yeah, cool. I yeah. didn't know that he bought it at the, the yeah, coffee, coffee shop. So yeah, I went yeah, to yeah. LCBO, and I'm there. Listen, lady, you have to have a cream of coconut here because it looks like booze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen it at his yeah. house. Like, I'm yeah. not crazy. And she's Googling the thing and can't find it. Oh, oh wow. She, she yeah. actually tried to help. Yeah. That's impressive. For those of you who don't live in Ontario, LCBO is our Liquor Control Board of Ontario. Um, and fun. It's, uh, fun. Yeah, things. we don't. We, Provincially it's, run. It's terrible. Said. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sponsoring it in any way, shape, or form on the show. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Where do you get Where do you get these recipes? So what it is, I got it from Jeff, the Beach Bum Berry. Your Bombardi. favorite. Bombardi. Woohoo. That's what she calls it. The Great Strong Bully? What? <laughs> the Great Strong Bully. Anyway, so what it is, he actually, he got it from Hank Riddle. Riddle me that. Tom Riddle? The Riddler? The Riddler. <laughs> he's like uh, Tom Riddle's cousin, like yeah, exactly. idiot cousin. Exactly, yeah. cousin, yeah. Alcoholic cousin. <laughs> I uh, got the recipe. Anyway, so anyways, he was a bartender for Don for 30 years in different locations that Don had. So he had a lot of recipes that he was willing to share. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, okay. he was actually willing to share. Most people don't want to share. Mm-hmm. Well, Don and Trader Vic didn't. They didn't want to share. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And exactly. this one's just like willing to share. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, I know I, I know we've we've talked about uh, Donnie Boy there a little bit before. Especially but the beginning of our season Yeah, but, stuff. but for our new listeners, do you, do you want to just kind, kind of, of elaborate a, a recap? little bit? And yeah. I, don't, I don't remember too much about Don. Yeah, yeah. So let's do a recap. So basically, Don the Beachcomber, his original name actually is Ernest Ray Gant. Hmm. Ernest I would Raymond Gant. my name right away. Wow. Well, the importance of being Ernest. <laughs> Ernest. Ernest goes to uh, camp. Ernest goes to a tiki bar. There you go. Ernest goes to oh, a tiki wow. bar. I like that. There you, you go. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So what it is that Don the Beachcomber actually is an alias that he had during Prohibition when he was smuggling rum back and forth between Jamaica and the United States on his grandfather's yacht. Fancy. He was yeah. 14 years old during that time when he was doing this little Jeez. transportation, the rum runner Times back, back then. Yeah. yeah. So by 18, he actually had traveled the world twice. Boom, boom, boom. That's Thug remarkable. life. That That's a remarkable. life there, eh? Thug life right there. Holy moly. 18, he already traveled the world twice. And 14, you're smuggling? Thug yeah. life. Smuggling rum. Beach life. Damn. A little bit different than North American well, beach his, life his, nowadays. His grandfather basically is like, I could teach you so much more than school can being on the water. He so, sure did. I guess yeah. he did. I'm 100% sure he did. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. So when he returned to the United States after all of his travels, actually, he was very broke. And so what he started doing is jobs, like little jobs like valet at ritzy Hollywood restaurants. And so he started like kind of rubbing elbows with like actors and producers and directors. The famous folk. The famous folk of Hollywood. And, well, he... and I, I imagine that after that many years at sea being being a scoundrel, 
um, he ha- really had the gift of the gab. Like he was able oh, to talk to anybody. Oh, he was telling stories about his adventures oh, yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. You imagine know? the stories like, he had. Oh yeah, Insane. like the, you know, the talking fisherman about his tale. adventures and stuff. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what he did is he would tell these stories to the, all these actors and, and producers and directors, and he also too on his journeys would bring things back to uh, to the United States. So he would have the souvenirs to like souvenirs prove the points, and artifacts, mm-hmm. and things like. And so they actually what ended up happening was that he became a movie consultant and on sets that were dealing Jeez. with any Polynesian sort of scenes cool. or acts or whatever. So like the Blue Hawaii, like with you know Elvis Presley and things like that, he would bring these all these artifacts to the movie set. Yeah. So what it ended up happening is that um, he was also the first bartender to actually to blend the rums together. So he did get all these different rums from around the regions. And so when he opened up his first bar, his first location, he actually was the very first person to blend rum. So others before that, cocktails would just have maybe a wine spirit, or even if they had say rum and gin, let's say. They'd already have one kind of rum and one kind of gin, and they put them together. He was mm. actually the very first person back in North America to mm. take all these different rums around the world and all the different characteristics and blend them together. Now, to, I mean, to we, make a distinct, like, like it's almost rum. like like a rum cocktail made solely of rum. Exactly. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, there are other stuff to it. No, 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 no like is... like to the cocktail, but like when he blended the rums, yes. it was like like he was taking sort of like the strengths of all of them and putting them together. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, like when we did the rum tasting, if you remember, like each one of those mm-hmm. had a different characteristic. So you can imagine. And we did take, a lot of blendeds, too. And yeah, yeah. You, well, imagine if you take some of the rums even that we had on the table that, that tasting and put those together, mm-hmm. you would have come up with something completely different. Different. You should have done that too. We didn't think of that. Yeah. Well, I wanted to, but he wouldn't let me. <laughs> I was really well, impressed. Those are rare bottles. I was no, because like I had a little bit of like rum runoff in all my glasses, and and I I poured them all into one glass, and it, it wasn't very good. <laughs> I but tried I, it, like I, I was, sipped it, and it was. Not I was very really good. surprised, though, that it changes so much with and without the ice. water. Yeah. Absolutely, likewise. I so, had no yes, idea because what yeah. it was is that some of them were better without the water or the ice, yeah. and then some of them were better with the ice. With the ice, yeah, yeah. yeah it was very interesting. Yeah. Unbelievable yeah, that it changes. And it will actually that be part two quickly. to that very soon, by the way. Oh, call mm. me. I want to. Yes, I want to yes. participate next time. Well, no, I mean we actually have. We'll have part two of the one that me and Cam did. But yes, we'll do another one for sure. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> Oh man! I got six months without you, so shut up. Ooh, oh man. snap! Did you know? Uh, I did not. I, I might have known. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Here we go. All right. So since we're talking about Thanksgiving during the show, we thought that maybe we guys give some some cool facts about Thanksgiving. So obviously, Thanksgiving is a national holiday in the United States and in Canada. It's and in the states they celebrate it on the fourth Thursday of November. And in the Canada, it's what the second Monday. Of is October, is? The second Monday of October, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It it's second or third, yeah, something like that. Really, you know what it is? It's, it's just like you know when you say daylight savings time, and you never know what it actually is until they tell you, like, oh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, and actually, did you hear that the province of British Columbia, my home province, uh, has actually, yeah, said to hell with this. They've actually talked about removing the the, the whole like yeah. time shift because it is, it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. You know Why? I mean? How come though? It used to be for farmers and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and it's just to... like there's not a lot of people who are farming anymore. Or yeah, like... so so now basically um, it... Like the idea was like before the clocks were like a thing that was common, you know, farmers would get up with the sunlight. Yeah. And so... That became like say six o'clock or something. Yeah, but that would screw with them when the day the days got shorter and stuff. And so they just push everything back. Yeah, sec- second week? Yeah, second Monday of October. Oh, there we go. Good to know. And in, in the States, it's the last Thursday? Yeah, we're going to break that down. Yes, there sir. There we go. Mm. Yes, sir. So the event of the Americans, uh, commonly called the first Thanksgiving, was actually mm. celebrated by, by the pilgrims after the very first harvest in the New World in October 1621. Hmm. So closer so to the So they actually Canadian celebrated version. in October. Yeah. 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 Huh. Funny that. Uh, funny how that happens yeah. that way, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They make fun of us for having had two football teams with the same name. That's right. We rough have that? Riders. Really? Well, we don't anymore. We well, did. not anymore, but... We had Rough Riders, oh God, Sketch ones, stupid. Rough Riders, They were Ottawa. spelled differently, but yes, we so did. So what? So according to the attendee, Edward uh, Winslow... Hmm. Yes, so Edward Winslow actually said that there was attended was 90 Native Americans and 53 pilgrims. Nice. Edward Winslow, not to be confused with Carl Winslow. No, is there a difference? I don't. Well, know. Carl Winslow was uh, the fella on in Police Academy who made all the sounds. Oh, oh my right. god! Yeah. I thought that it was something important. <laughs> uh, it just guys, was. that's important. Dave, come on now. 
We Jeepers, grew up on Police creepers. Academy. Come on now, yeah. If you're a boy from the 80s, maybe you got this. If you're not, they, welcome to my world. Anyway, please uh, so proceed, okay, so Craig. Thomas Jefferson from 1809 choose to not to observe the holidays. So he said, nope, this holiday's not going to exist, and I'm not going to accept it. And so the celebration actually didn't exist until the presidency of Abraham Lincoln when Thanksgiving became a federal holiday in 1863. Wow. And it was actually celebrated on the last Thursday in November. Okay. Well, no wonder Americans don't know when it is because yeah, it's but constantly hold on. changing. Hold on, changing. though. It yeah, changes even like more. It changes again. I kind of knew this. Did you know? Okay. Oh, so okay. It, it's actually, it changes more. Don't so it worry. changes again. Okay. So uh, under President uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1942 onwards, Thanksgiving would be proclaimed by Congress to be the fourth Thursday in November. Hmm. There was a thing. Right before he proclaimed that, mm -hmm. that it was before Roosevelt did. Yeah. Or, okay, yeah. That um, they they put the they put it on the third Thursday of November for some mm -hmm. reason I don't mm -hmm. remember what. Because actually I googled because Justin was like, oh, when's when's Thanksgiving in the states this year? Mm -hmm. So I googled to see because I didn't remember for sure. No, what of course day. not. Yeah. So and then there were Google, so the many questions. Googly, well, googly. Who doesn't? Nobody will be at the bar and be like, okay, Google, blah, 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 blah. It's called being with it. It's called knowledge. I'm behind nowadays. the times. So, yeah, so, so basically, I, I Googled it to see what day it was, and there were so many questions like, why is Thanksgiving so late this year? And I'm like, what? It's so late? Hmm. And then I realized it's because this year, or for some reason, there are more. Um, Thursdays. Thursdays. And the last Thursday sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. November is super late in November. Oh, so they were, were all like, oh my God, like Thanksgiving is almost like crambled on, on, on Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be less than a month from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Isn't that interesting? So they were in shock, but it's, they actually, Roosevelt actually was the one that proclaimed yeah, like, a fixed Thursday. Right. Like there's no more back and forth. I don't care. No matter yeah. what day it falls, it's that day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, and guess what's the day after? Black, Black Friday. Friday. Uh, That's a scary day. For the last time, this will be our greatest Thanksgiving. Anyway, so, yeah, so there's some cool facts about uh, Don the Beachcomber and also about some Thanksgiving facts as well. And I uh, hope you everyone's want, enjoying You want their a Thanksgiving. cute Thanksgiving fact? Okay, what's a cool Thanksgiving fact? We don't, we don't have um, savage turkeys in brazil wild turkeys wild no none they don't exist okay so you're bringing domesticated turkeys only <laughs> they fly we them only in. killed domesticated okay. turkeys. well yeah because have you seen the wild turkeys around here i have a bunch in the back of my back yeah and uh, don't don't mess with them no i'm scared yeah yeah, yeah. they're big there's They'll some really funny videos on youtube of we turkeys attacking have... postal workers we <laughs> <laughs> God. you think i'm joking but no, i'm, I'm gonna I actually you. search <laughs> We don't have those in Brazil. So when yeah. I saw wild turkeys, it was only like three years ago the first time I saw them. Oh, wow. Pretty oh, cool. Wow. Well, and they look kind of like vultures too, right? Because they got the bald head and like like vulture, you know. The, the, yeah. The, yeah. But they're way bigger. Turkeys are? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah like, okay. Uh, it depends on the vultures, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. And on that note. Happy that Thanksgiving. Note. On that note. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, folks, if you're whoa, celebrating whoa, whoa, it this uh, this year, this month. Gobble, and gobble. so let's tell everybody who we are. So it's www.tikicentralcanada.ca. All one word, gobble, gobble. Or .com. Oh, there you go. And so on that page, you'll see our main page. You'll see a picture of Cam and Paula and Mark and me. And mm. also the, this, this episode will be on there. And also the recipes to all the episodes that we just did. Also, too, some information about some new upcoming things coming up on um, some shows, a newsletter you can subscribe to. There's also an episode page, a recipe page, and a subscriber page. So please, leave the love of God. Please. We, uh, <laughs> I watched that we, yesterday. We beg of you. So good. Is that on Disney Plus? Yeah, it is. Oh, jeez. Yeah, somebody just got Disney Plus. So, of course, they've been shitter chattering about that all oh. day long now. Here Apparently, we go. it's the, the poor only... little cartoon shoe. Only, oh. only movie ever, only time ever that you see Daffy and Donald Duck in the same exact place. It's oh, impossible. Wow. You will never see it again. Wow. Wow. Or, or Mickey and Bugs Bunny. All I the more know. reason to subscribe to Disney Plus, folks. Uh, there you go. Uh, wait, wait, to our uh, gracious overlords at Disney, uh, I'm waiting for my paycheck in the mail. That's what I say. What about our subscribers? <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah, so please do subscribe. As you know, there's no commercials on our show. And that's to the reason Tiki why. Central, not to Disney. Exactly. <laughs> that's clear. I'm glad that you clarified that. There you go. So anyway, we'll go off and make some more drinks. We're going to make more Paula Wishes. <gasps> yes. There we go. That's your favorite drink. Second and one's a charm. Second will be a charm. And uh, I think uh, Cam's going to load up more beer. Mm. <laughs> there you go. All right, so folks, we're going to head off, and uh, we'll talk to you next time, and uh, see you later. Bye. 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 Peace. Cheerio. Well, I don't know about you, but I got informed. Guys, hey, guys, where's my drink? <laughs> hey, I'll get you, my pretty. My pretty. My precious. Oh, no, that's another one. You dirty rat. You kill my brother.